Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna do an update video on my guide on the NVIDIA app and NVIDIA driver for 2026. A lot changed in 2025 in December with all those DLSS 4.5 modification. I have dedicated video on this, but now I'm gonna talk on the old uh, NVIDIA app. I'm going to show you a lot of stuff. Sometimes you will not see them because you have a different generation on your video card. So it can be different if you have a 1000 series, 2000, 3000, 4000, even 5000. So some stuff can be different. First of all, we're going to go to the driver section. Make sure this one is up to date and make sure that you don't have uh, the option to update your NVIDIA app. You need to have the latest NVIDIA app and the latest game ready driver. After that, in the graphic, uh, last year I did a guide for NVIDIA app. And if you remember, uh, you had the option to click uh, individually on a game and modify the DLSS uh, option so you can push the latest uh, DLSS 4.0 version. But now you have a global setting. It's more, much easier and it will be applied to all your video games in your NVIDIA app. So let's talk a little bit about it. So first of all, in DLSS override, before you had the um, latest version, so you you were pushing the latest version of frame generation, latest version of super resolution and re reconstruction. Now it's not the case. Uh, they just uh, changed the wording for recommended. And I will explain you what is the difference. So if we go to custom and go to uh, super resolution, you have a lot of different model. Preset M and Preset L are DLSS 4.5, and Preset K is the best version for DLSS 4. Right now, uh, DLSS M is optimized for the performance mode, and DLSS uh, Preset L is optimized for ultra performance. So NVIDIA don't recommend to use uh, DLSS 4.5 for balance, quality, and DLAA. They still recommending Preset K. So if you're still at recommended like this, depending on what you're going to choose inside of the game, your preset will change. So for example, if you're using preset, uh, uh, you're using uh, the performance mode for your DLSS, it's going to use preset M. If you're using ultra performance, it's going to use preset L. If you want to use balance quality or DLA, it's going to use preset K. So it's not DLSS 4.5, it will be DLSS 4. So this is a big difference over there. If you want to force it, so for an example, I absolutely want to use preset M, you can do that and you say always use this one and also always use um, the uh, preset, the mode quality. So you apply it. So if you want, you can globally push the uh, preset model and the quality model over there, uh, the, the mode for it. So. That's a thing that you can do. For me right now, the LSS 4.5 at balance quality and um, the LAA, it's too sharp. Honestly, I can't really use it. I did a test on my LG TV. On a 4K TV, the quality can be nice at uh, preset M. But uh, for the majority of the time, I still prefer to use my preset K. Uh, preset K, the issue, you have some ghosting issue in some games. I feel like when in, you have a lot of movement, the DLSS 4.5 is really good, but I'm not a huge fan of uh, performance mode right now for DLSS 4.5. I feel like my preset K is a lot better for the image quality. So anyway, my recommendation for this, I have a dedicated guide if you want to see. If you have a 4000 or 5000 series, I recommend to just go recommended and change depending on what you want to do. But if you have like a 2000 series, for example, you have an RTX 2060 and you like to use the performance mode, my recommendation is go with preset K like this and um, just select a model, for example, performance or just use 3D app. Why is that? The LSS 4.5, the preset L and M right now are taking too much resources on older cards, series 3000 and 2000. You can expect that you're going to lose 15 to 20% in your FPS. So if you want to use performance mode or ultra performance mode on those cards, make sure that you push the preset K and uh, you will still keep your FPS. But if you have a um, uh, more recent uh, video card, say 4000 or 5000, just go recommend everywhere and you will be fine. After that, if you want to upscale your resolution, you can do that with DL, DL scaling. I don't recommend to use the D Legacy one. 
So for an example, I have a 1440p monitor. I want to go higher in the resolution. Some people like to do that. And after that, to use uh, DLSS to uh, just gain a little bit of uh, FPS because this will tank your FPS when you do that. I'm not a fan of it. I like to play native, but I'm gonna, just going to show you the option. Smooth motion also is available. Uh, when you're playing a game that doesn't have a frame generation, this one can be nice. It helps to have a lot more FPS, but honestly, it adds a lot of input lag. I'm not a fan of it, but if you want to use it, you can over there. Low latency mode, just go with on. Max frame rate, if you want to lock your FPS, this is where you're going to do it. I like to lock at 233 because I'm using the G-Sync over there. I have a monitor that is compatible with G-Sync. And the thing is, my monitor is 240 hertz. Um for the refresh rate. If I have more than 240 FPS, you're gonna lose your G-Sync on your monitor. So to keep it, I uh, just want to make sure that I lock my FPS at 233 and everything will be good. So for the power management mode, this one I recommend to go with normal. Uh, I know a lot of people is saying to use the preferred maximum performance. I did a couple of tests uh, with 3D Mark and video games. I always have best FPS and the best score to, uh, to 3D Mark with normal. My boost clock are longer, uh, so it's better to use this one for your GPU when you're gaming. Shader cache size, uh, by default, you were going to use 5 gig. I recommend to go with 10 or 100 if you have the disk space. If you install a lot of different games, if you have more than 20, 25 games, you're not going to just like rebuild your shader cache size every time. So you're going to uh, have less issue with like shader cache corruption and mini stuttering in your game. So that's why I like to do that. After that, we're going to go to system. If you want to use your G-Sync, this is where you're going to activate it. I recommend to go with full screen and window. Make sure that your uh, monitor is compatible and it's activated. Also for your monitor, make sure that you're playing native and make sure that you have the IS refresh rate available to your monitor. Really important. I know a lot of people that are buying like gaming monitor, but Windows put them at 60 by default and they don't change it. So super important to do that. And the color option, if you have a com um, um, monitor that is compatible with HDR and compatible with 10-bit color, make sure that you're using 10-bit RGB and full for your dynamic range. Look at the specs on your monitor to make sure this one is good. And I like to put a little bit more digital vibrance over there at 55. The default is 50. When you play a game like Unshowdown, Battlefield 6, it's a little bit gray and you want to see your enemy. Uh, more saturation in your color can be nice. Uh, after that, in the performance tab, I like to go with power maximum at 133. Uh, you need the room on your video card. So if you have very good thermal, I recommend to put the power maximum at maximum. Um, I did a couple of tests. You're getting a longer boost clock. So I'm getting 5 to 7% boost in my FPS because I have good thermals. But on my old uh, 27E, it doesn't change anything because my thermal will already high. So... Again, if you're playing a game and you're at like 60 degree, it can um, help you a lot with the NVIDIA algorithm. You're going to have a nice boost in your FPS. After that, we're going to go to settings. So you have the NVIDIA overlay if you want to use that. In some games, it can cause like stuttering, lag, crash. So if you have random issues, sometimes just deactivate it and make sure that this is not the, the cause of your issue. We're going to press Alt-Z. And you have a different option over there. So you can record yourself, instant replays over there, screenshot, highlight if you want to add game filter. So everything is pretty much there. Also in the statistic tab, you can activate your stats like this. So if you want basic stats like a frame rate, GPU utilization, CPU utilization, this is pretty much where you're going to do it. You can also do it custom to see all your options and just select what you need so you have a lot of option with this it's very very cool also uh you can start or stop logging your stats in uh, some folder and this is pretty much it i'm going to deactivate this for now and also we're going to click on settings over there if you want to change your settings when you're capturing video this is where you go I like to use the resolution in game, but the, the pretty cool thing now you can record at 120 FPS if your card is compatible. So that's really cool. And also if your card is compatible, you can have the codec AV1. Compression is a lot better than 62, uh, six, 264. Sorry. If you compare, for example, 25 of uh, uh, bitrate 
with 264 versus the one with AV1, you will see that AV1 is a lot better for your image quality. So I recommend to use that one. And after that, adjust your bitrate if you want custom to have a really, really good image quality for your video. So this is pretty much it for my guide for the NVIDIA app in 2026. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me uh, your video card. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.